Welcome to our program. My friend Sean had just gotten back from the Congo. In an empty warehouse, listening to reports from the ground, we moved in to understanding the deadliest war in our world and what we could do to help. I'm calling out from my native country, country I call home, from a continent that we all call home. You and me, me and we, we the free, so hear me. An emergency exists right now. The great war of Africa, fought on the hills and plains of the eastern Congo, has killed more people than any other conflict since the Second World War, and is still killing them. Mortality survey found as many as 5.4 million people have died from war-related causes in the Congo. Armies of business, they went into Congo not to track down killers, but to seize the country's unbelievably immense mineral wealth, to grab it and to sell it out to New York, to London, to Paris, to the developing world. People have looked at Congo for over a hundred years and they've seen a great big pile of riches with some black people inconveniently sitting on top of it. It's not a distant tribal war that has nothing to do with you. It's a war whose trail of blood leads absolutely directly to our world and indeed to your own apartment. Militia groups are targeting civilians and there's widespread killing, rape. Are no longer fighting each other so much but instead targeting the other side's women. For Congolese children, the tragedy is endless. Massacred in their villages Massacred. by machetes or recruited as child soldiers. Hundreds of thousands of children are victims and many have become murderers. Former child soldiers then told us that the kids, too small to carry a gun, were being sent to the front lines armed with only a whistle. An emergency exists right now. 5.4 million people have died from war-related causes in the Congo. We didn't have much, That's true. but out of the void, an idea. Yes, I lay down, I lay down. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Take it on again. Their weapon could be our voice. You tried to take it on again. We did what anyone would. We sold the whistle to rehabilitate the most vulnerable. Sing a beer. For all the children in Congo, I say we should come together and go back to school and rebuild our country. We found Congolese visionaries and partnered with them to rehabilitate hundreds of children and lead the future generations. This is only the beginning. What we need is peace. But as the broadcast continued, we knew that there was more for all of us to do. And it's a real disgrace to us because last time there was this scale of mass slaughter in the Congo is when the Belgians colonized it and killed 10 million people. So the situation that occurred under King Leopold 100 years ago is basically what you've got in Congo today. There were mass campaigns across the developed world led by people like Joseph Conrad, Arthur Conan Doyle. There were questions asked in the Senate. There were huge mass meetings in London. The same thing has happened in our lifetimes and we've done virtually nothing. We needed a symbol that would stand for peace and drive towards the end of the largest war in the world. And the whistle, it sounded like this. If we believe, as they believe, that all of them free, then be a whistle blowing for peace. We didn't have all the answers, but dreamed that falling whistles would turn towards peace in Congo with four forward steps. First, we must educate. The torch has been passed to a new generation unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights. Our past is filled with a history of whistleblowers standing up against impossible odds. We will learn from these giants and publish solutions from better minds than our own. We call it the Free World Leader. To educate is one thing, but we knew we'd have to get the message out for a free Congo. We have to disseminate the idea that peace is possible. 
So we build museums in the heart of retail stores, telling a story of Congo and the path to peace. The message is out there, and brave men and women are responding individually. However, we need a place to congregate together around ideas that will lead to peace. Like the speakeasies of old, gathering in defiance of an unjust law. Whistler societies will grow together people to participate in solutions and end the violence of an unjust war. And finally, free men and free women will use that which is most fundamental to our freedom, our speech, to speak truth to power and advocate. We will go on to petition lawmakers for conflict-free electronics and stamp our protest towards a full resolution, not stopping until that final day, the day we see peace in common. We are all immigrants, we are all refugees. My refugees of the free, be a whistleblower for peace. Both of our countries now face the same problem of a swiftly changing world. The same question of how to bring our abundance and our technological progress to the fulfillment of all men and the liberation of all mankind. So I come here to South Africa learning to live together in mutual respect for the rights and the well-being of all of our people. Rehabilitate, educate, disseminate, congregate, advocate. If this wheel is rolling, then we are on the move. And peace is the new frontier. We believe. Do you?